You know when Allah blesses people with children, some of you probably have children, sons and daughters. When your son reaches the age where you think he ought to be married, do you go to the street and pick up the first girl? Darling, come to my house, you be my, my son's wife. Is that how they do it in Birmingham in UK? No. Uh, no, you try and find the best wife for your, for your son. To become your daughter-in-law, to spend the rest of his life with your son. If you want the best bride for your son, don't you think Allah wanted the best bride for his Habibullah? Allah made sure he got the best women to share their lives with his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were all, they were all such. There was no other woman like them in the world. Allah says so. Lastunnaka ahadim min al nisa, and they all became such. Allah says, wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum. His wives aren't just his wives. My Prophet's wives are your mothers. You go home, may Allah never bring such a day when not just any Muslim, any decent man, anywhere in the world, he goes home and disrespects his mother. Says to his mother, I don't care, you are not my mother anymore. We are living in times, strange times, when everything is promoted with women. Mobile phones, cars, houses, holidays, you name it. They put up a poster of a beautiful woman and people look and they stare, whoa man. <laughs> and even an old hajisa walking by perhaps will be tempted to glance a second look. <laughs> to look and stare at any ghair mahram is haram. But to go home and that old woman in your house, old woman or old man, to look at them with love. What did Rasulullah say? Allah will give you the reward of one hajj, and one hajj. And if somebody is fortunate enough to have their mother and fathers in home and they look at them hundred times a day, Allah will give them the reward of hundred hajj a day. But Allah forbid anybody goes home. He says to a, that woman who can't see properly, who can't speak properly, who can't hear properly, can't talk properly, can't walk properly, to look at her and smile. Allah was going to give you the reward of one hajj, but somebody says, may Allah never bring such a day in any man's life, let alone any Muslim's life, that you are not my mother. Allah forbid, Allah forbid. May Allah never bring such a day. But if anybody was, that man, Badbakht, Badbakht, but he won't be a kafir, and I'm saying this in the presence of ulama. But if anybody says, Aisha is not my mother, Hafsa is not my mother, Wallahi Lazim, that person will become a kafir because Allah is saying she's your mother. People have the audacity, people have the nerve. Every Ramadan in many parts of the world, 17th of Ramadan, many people celebrate Muslims. Why? Allah honored the Muslims. Allah honored Rasulullah. Allah honored Sahaba on the 17th of Ramadan with a victory in Badr. And the Prophet وسلم, said to us, Umar, Umar, what do you know about the people of Badr? Umar leave him alone what do you know about the people of Badr Allah looked at them and Allah said you can do whatever you please I've forgiven you all Allah said to them you can do as you can do whatever I have forgiven them all 17th of Ramadan most khatibs We'll talk about the victory of Muslims in Badr, but 17th of Ramadan is also a day when the beloved wife of Rasulullah, Ummul Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, Habiba to Habiba Rasulullah, the most beloved wife of the most beloved Prophet of Allah, she passed away two years ago. The she has celebrated in London the death of Aisha. It's on the YouTube. Chanting slogans in Auzubillah. Aisha Finnar. 
It's on the YouTube. My dear brothers, this is an issue like I said. Aisha was close to the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't have the time. Maulana gave me 20 minutes. He said, please finish 19 and a half. I've got two minutes left. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, Rasulullah was so sensitive to Aisha. Once, other wives of Rasulullah, they came to the Fatima to put in a request. And when they came, I can't give detail. I've only got two minutes left. Rasulullah said, oh Aisha, oh Fatima, when he comes to Aisha, don't say anything to me. When he comes to Aisha, don't say anything to me. When people slandered Aisha radiallahu anha, everybody was worried. Nobody knew what to say. Allah came to the defense of Aisha. Mullah Bakir Majlasi Hayatul Qulub, volume 2, page 900. Mullah Bakir Majusi goes on to say, we believe in the Mahdi. We believe he will be born. The Shias, they say, he has already been born. He's in living in the cave. Anybody living in England is called an Englishman. Huh? Those who live in England are called? Become what everybody can speak some English. Those who live in England are called? Englishmen. Those who live in a cave are called? Caveman. She has believed the 12th Imam is in the cave. If he's been living in a cave for 1200 years, then he is definitely a cave. They say he will come out towards the end of time. We believe he will be born. I'm saying caveman because there was no such man. The Shias, they said, Mullah Bakir Majlisi says, Ali bin Ibrahim ne rivayat ki hai ke unki ek khianat Aisha ka talha aur zubair ke saath Amir al-Mu'mineen se jang ke liye basra jana tha aur Hazrat Sahib al-Amr This is the Shia terminology for Imam Mahdi. Which Mahdi? The caveman. The real Mahdi who will come. He will honor Aisha radiallahu anha. But they say, Sahib al-Amr Aisha ko bi hukm khuda zinda karenge aur is khyanat ke sabab had jari karenge we don't honor such a caveman we don't accept such a caveman we don't respect such a caveman Aisha radiallahu anha is the beloved wife of Rasulullah the honor of Aisha is the honor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam